Good Sunday morning, everybody. I hope you're having a great morning so far. I hope you're getting ready to go visit a church of your choice and be able to worship the Lord Jesus in person. If not, hopefully you at least found a local church that you can visit online and worship that way. Our topic from today.refrainmedia.com, oddly enough, is royal battle. And this has nothing to do with elections for a number of reasons. Number one, there's nothing royal about the elections in this country. So that's all I'm going to say. And we're going to be reading Exodus chapter 15, verses 1 through 21 from the English Standard Version of the Bible. So let's get right into it. Then Moses and the people of Israel sang this song to the Lord, saying, I will sing to the Lord, for he has trumpeted gloriously. The horse and his rider has been thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. This is my God, and I will praise him, my Father's God, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a man of war, the Lord is his name. Pharaoh's chariots and his host he cast into the sea, and his chosen officers were sunk into the Red Sea. The floods covered them, they went down into the depths like a stone. Your right hand, O Lord, glorious in power, your right hand, O Lord, shatters the enemy. In the greatness of your majesty, you overthrow your adversaries. You send out your fury. It consumes them like stubble. At the blast of your nostrils, the waters piled up. The flood stood up in a heap. The deeps congealed in the heart of the sea. The enemy said, I will pursue. I will overtake. I will divide the spoil. My desire shall have its fill of them. I will draw my sword. My hand shall destroy them. You blew with your wind, the sea covered them. They sank like lead into the mighty waters. Who is like you, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like you, majestic in holiness, awesome in glorious deeds, doing wonders? You stretched out your right hand, the earth swallowed them. You have led in your steadfast love the people whom you have redeemed. You have guided them by your strength to your holy abode. The people have heard, they tremble. Pangs have seized the inhabitants of Philistia. Now are the chiefs of Edom dismayed. Trembling seizes the leaders of Moab, and all the ha inhabitants of Canaan have melted away. Terror and dread fall upon them because of the greatness of your arm. They are still as a stone, till your people, O Lord, pass by. Till the people pass by whom you have purchased, you will bring them in and plant them in your own mountain, the place, O Lord, which you have made your abode, the sanctuary, O Lord, which your hands have established. The Lord will reign forever and ever. For when the horses of Pharaoh and his chariots and his horsemen went into the sea, the Lord brought back the waters of the sea upon them, for the people of Israel walked on dry ground in the midst of the sea. Then Miriam, the prophetess, the sister of Aaron, took a tambourine in her hand, and all the women went out after her with tambourines and dancing. And Miriam sang to them, Sing to the Lord, for he has trumpeted gloriously the horse and his rider he has thrown into the sea. So yesterday, for those of you who watch this on my personal channel, where I do this every day, if not, you can go to the link below and see my personal channel. And you can follow along with these every day. We only do them once a week here on our RV and Travel channel. So, yesterday we reflected on the Pharaoh of Egypt who spoke proudly and defiantly against the Lord. That set up a dramatic showdown. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is the King of creation, the Lord of the whole universe. He told Pharaoh, let my people go, but Pharaoh refused. The Lord God gave Pharaoh many opportunities to acknowledge the Lord's kingship, but Pharaoh kept ignoring God. After a series of ten plagues, Pharaoh did let the people go, but then he roused his army to go and recapture the Israelites as they traveled away towards the Red Sea. But Pharaoh's forces were overwhelmed and swallowed up by the Red Sea. The victory of the Lord was complete and definitive. This is what finally awaits anyone who resists the true Lord of Lords and King of Kings. In Exodus 15, the Israelites sing their victory song. God's victory is their victory. They look back with joy. They look forward with hope. 
and they look up in triumph because the Lord reigns forever and ever. In Christ Jesus, the Lord has won the decisive victory over the powers of sin, death, and hell. By faith, his victory becomes our victory, our joy, and our hope, and our triumph. Let's pray. O oh God, though this world with devils filled should threaten to undo us, we will not fear. For you have willed your truth to triumph through us. Thank you for Christ, our victorious King. Amen. So yesterday I asked, are you Pharaoh? And again, what I meant by that was, are you putting yourself before God? Are you putting something else before God? Uh, at some point in our lives, we all do. I hate to use the term the best Christians, but in a generic sense, even the best Christians do this from time to time because we are all human and have been born with that sinful nature. You know, as I look over this um, devotion, I, I see the Lord has won the decisive victory over the powers of sin, death, and hell. By faith, his victory becomes our victory, our joy, our hope, and our triumph. Is Jesus' victory over death, hell, and sin your triumph? And, when I, and that is, are you allowing it to be your triumph? Because it should be. If you have Jesus Christ in your heart, this is your triumph. We have conquered hell. We have conquered sin through Jesus Christ. He is our Redeemer. He is our King. And He is soon coming back for us. And we need to make sure when He does come back that we are ready. And how we get to be ready is we are armed. And how are we armed for God? We are armed for God with His faith, with His holiness. Our weapons are our hands and our mouth, and not in the way you think. We use our hands to do the good deeds that God wants us to do. We use our mouth to spread the joy and love of Jesus Christ. We use our arms to hold on to those who may be struggling. Those are our weapons of war. Those are our weapons of spiritual warfare. Our weapons are not social media posts of random quotes that may or may not have any bearing whatsoever on anything or even random Bible verses. We are warriors for Christ. We have to get up out of our chairs, out of our comfort zones, and fight that fight for Him. Wrap our arms around the lost. Use our hands to build up the forgotten. And use our mouths to spread the gospel of the good news. So can we do that today? Can you do that today? You know, some days I, I do better at that than others. And I'm pretty sure we can all say that. But today, I want to rededicate myself to being a warrior for Christ, to using my hands to help, my arms to hold, and my mouth to spout the good news, not the rhetoric of political times, not the hellfire and brimstone, but the love of Jesus Christ. And I hope you can do that today as well. And I hope you can do that every day. So again, for those of you who are watching this for the first time, I do these devotions every day. I go through the commentary and I mean, and the scripture readings from today.reframemedia.com. And then we sit and talk about it. Hopefully we talk about it together because I like, I like hearing and seeing interaction. You guys are encouraged to comment either on my Facebook page or in the comments below on the YouTube video, your thoughts on this devotion, your opinions, also your prayer requests, your praise reports, or just something you'd like to get off your mind, something good that happened, something bad that happened, whatever the case may be. If you need somebody to pray with you, we're here for you. And I was very emphatic about using the word pray with you. I do not want to pray for you. 
I want to pray with you. And I know that may rub some people the wrong way, so let me explain really fast. We should all be praying together as much as we can. So never ask somebody to pray for you without at least asking them to pray with you first. Because the power of prayer is exponentially greater when we do it together. So let's pray together for our well-being, for the furtherment of God's kingdom, for our country. Let's pray for these things together continually. So if you do have a specific prayer request or praise report, please put them in the comments below. Or if you um, want to just reach out to us privately, our email and phone number, which you can call or text to, is in the description of this and all the devotional videos. Anything you send via email, text, or phone call is 100% confidential. We'd love to hear from you. And we'd love to help you walk on this journey towards heaven. And we'd also like your help as we try to walk this journey as well. So thank you guys so much for watching. We love you, and we'll see you tomorrow morning. Bye.